Selamat datang and welcome back. Rainy season is coming to an end in Bali, which means it's time to start planning longer rides to temples, volcanoes, waterfalls, as well as one of the many other beautiful islands that Indonesia has to offer. Last summer, I rode from Bali to Mount Bromo in East Java. And during that ride, I came to the realization that though the 150X does have enough power for your typical Southeast Asian driving, when you're riding up very steep hills with hairpin turns, you may find that it really doesn't have enough torque. So if the areas you find yourself riding in require more torque and acceleration than your motorcycle currently offers, I have a solution for you and it's not very expensive. Try changing the front and or rear sprocket on your motorcycle. This will change the final drive ratio, which is the tooth count of the rear sprocket divided by the tooth count of the front sprocket. My bike came with a 15 tooth front sprocket and a 46 tooth rear sprocket, which is a drive ratio of 3.07. Now, initially I decided to go a little conservative and I just purchased a 47 tooth rear sprocket which gave me a drive ratio of 3.13. I tested it out for a few weeks and I was actually pretty happy with the results. However, I didn't get to go on any rides with extremely steep hills. So I decided perhaps I would want just a little bit more torque for climbing those hills. And I purchased another 48 tooth rear sprocket. This gave me a final drive ratio of 3.2. After riding it for a few weeks, I've decided this is what I'm gonna stick with. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be happy with it. It should provide the torque and acceleration I want for most of the riding I do around Indonesia. But in the future, I may also try out a 14 tooth in the front and a 47 tooth in the back, just to see how well it works out while riding on long tours up steep hills with a passenger, a loaded top box, and panniers. For those of you who don't know, the drive ratio is the number of times the front sprocket must turn in order for the rear sprocket to turn just one time. So if you want to increase acceleration and torque for climbing hills, you'll want to decrease the front sprocket and increase the rear sprocket or do just one or the other. Now, if on the other hand, what you wanna do is increase your top end speed at the expense of losing some acceleration and torque, then you'll wanna do the exact opposite. Either decrease the size of the rear sprocket or increase the size of the front sprocket. There's one very important note you should keep in mind. If you have several thousand kilometers on your bike, you don't wanna change just one sprocket. You need to buy a new front and rear sprocket as well as a new chain. And the reason for this is wear and tear. If you put a new sprocket in with an old worn chain and the uh, worn secondary sprocket, then the new sprocket is gonna wear down a lot faster. It'll still work, but it's best to just change the whole setup all at once. There are easy formulas to help you figure the increase or decrease in RPM, torque, and top end speed for each change you make in the size of your sprockets. However, I'm not gonna go over those in this video because most of you will probably just skip past that part. And if you are a numbers nerd like I am, and you wanna do all the number crunching for yourself, there are plenty of really good YouTube videos to help you figure out what kind of change you wanna make. Based on the videos I viewed, it's become apparent that most people are satisfied with changing either just one or two teeth in the back or one tooth up front. But keep in mind, changing the size of the front sprocket is gonna make a bigger difference for every increase or decrease in the number of teeth than it does when you change the rear sprocket. Another bit of information you may be interested in. If you change the gear ratio on your bike, the speedometer readout is most likely gonna change as well. The reason for that is the fact that most new bikes have the speedometer sensor in the transmission on the bike. Uh, if you have an older bike and the sensor is in the front wheel, then making these changes won't affect it whatsoever. Since I'm raising the gear ratio, which is also referred to as making the gearing low or short, I'm also increasing the readout on the speedometer. Most motorbikes come from the factory with a speedometer that reads out a little faster than what you're actually traveling. So if you make a change like I did, you're gonna be off that much more. And if you're riding down the road and you find that everyone's passing you when you used to be the one passing them, that's why. Over the next few weeks, I intend to post several more videos covering all the various modifications I've done to my 150X. So hopefully it'll give you some ideas of what you want to do to your bike. Thanks for watching and have a great day.